guys welcome back to the channel if you haven't been here before my name is Patricia this guy is bogey and we live full-time in a 2009 road track class B RV van today I wanted to do a video about six months living in a van any regrets maybe give you some backstory of the time that I've been here in the North Georgia mountains since I left Florida. Um, I'm technically slightly over six months because the first video I made about this, I ended up losing all the footage. So we're about six and a half months in living in a van, first three weeks in Florida. And that was uh, the month of September came up to the North Georgia mountains in the first week of October. And one of the first places I landed, and this is where we are right now, and I'm gonna bring you into this establishment, but one of the first places, you know, that week, say that first week that I came to, it's Mai Tai Kava Bar in Blairsville. Um, so, I don't know, if you know what a kava bar is, cool, and if you don't, it's... How do you explain a kava bar? It's like a regular bar meets a juice bar meets Cheers. Do you guys remember the show Cheers? Where everybody knows your name. <laughs> so, picture a place where you can pretty much go any time of the day. Um but it's no alcohol where everybody knows your name. I think that's the simplest way I can explain it. Um, and in Florida, these kava bars are prevalent. Is that the right word? There's a lot of them. Up until the time I left Florida, I was in a kava bar community, as we call it. And we just know a lot of people that frequent the kava bars and I had a lot of friends and I always had somewhere to go um so one of the hardest things when I left when I was leaving when I was planning to leave when I was getting rid of stuff one of the hardest things that I had to let go of was this community and now there's a lot of people in this community and I don't want to insult like people I know, but they were just people I know. Like you had a, a few super close friends, but not many. Like I could go missing for days and nobody would like say, Hey, where are you? Um, but when you show up at the kava bar, yeah, you have, friends and you're talking and you hang out or you can work there if you are a, you know work at home or a remote worker you can work from there um, you can bring your kids you can bring your dog you can bring books and just go read in the corner like it was just somewhere to go to have people among you and as an introvert I didn't need to be like in with all the people all the time I just needed to be every now and then around people and you didn't necessarily have to talk to me I was good if you didn't <laughs> I could just sit up at the bar have my tea piddle around on my computer on my la uh, my uh, iPad or try to be productive but amongst people um, so also one of the hardest things to leave is a habit so that was a habit and so was I don't even know if I could say this name of the tea because it is controversial and I don't know if it's a word that I cannot say on YouTube, but it's a tea that the USDA has been trying to get control of, that they serve at these kava bars along with kava. So I don't know. Um, well, this tea has properties with different strains. So say like the strain, um, there's a strain that is 
pain relieving and helps you relax and sleep. There's another strain that's all mind and helps you focus or gives you energy. And then there's a strain that is euphoric, makes you feel good, makes you happy, makes you social. Um, so uh, this particular tea I had been drinking for eight years. So it's almost like I've been taking this like happy medication for, for years, you know, in a natural tea. Um, so that was one of the hardest things to also wrap my brain around that I'd be leaving that behind. Which is also a good thing because this community and this tea is also a hindrance. It kind of makes you um, stay in the box. You don't really try to do other things other than go hang out at the kava bar. Um, and then you need your tea every day because you're just used to it and you like what, what feeling it gives you. Um, so I know for me that I wanted to, you know, not be wanting that tea anymore. Um, but when I got to, to the North Georgia mountains, I went on my interviews, I got a job and I just had to wait for the following week so I could start my training. And I did find a kava bar here. And now, although that first week I, I did seek comfort in this kava bar for a few days, um, once I started working, I didn't, I've come up here maybe two other times in the last six months. So tonight I'm having the second live and the last time I had a live, I came and got this tea because I knew my introverted empathic self needed a little something to be able to sit in a live since it was my first time. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if I would be able to keep up. I didn't know if conversations would be kept going. So my solution was, you know, not to drink alcohol, but to go get this tea. <laughs> and it really helped. So I am here to show you guys the kava bar and to grab a tea for tonight's live. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you around. I mean, I might not be talking when I walk in there. I might just film some b-roll of the place so you can see what a kava bar looks like inside. Um, now the kava bar I came from, you know what, if I ha I'm, I sh I'm pretty sure I should have some video of the, the two different kava bars I used to go to in St. Pete and Madeira Beach. If I have a little bit of video, I'm going to go ahead and insert it maybe right here. Hey you guys. I wasn't able to find any videos because apparently all along that I've been making all these videos for YouTube, I've had to get rid of a lot of footage that I thought I wouldn't need. Ha ha ha. So here's a bunch of photos that I did keep of all my favorite people taken at the Kava Bar, both in uh, Madeira Beach and St. Petersburg. And just a bunch of me hanging out, whether it was by myself or with a dog or having a matcha latte or a tea or whatever. But, oh, that was me behind the bar working one anniversary party. Uh, I used to do social media for these bars as well for three years, so I was an employee as well. And it will always hold a special place in my heart. But uh, yeah, so this is giving you an idea what my life was prior to leaving in the van. This kava bar is in no way compared to the place I used to go to. Um, the places, they were just very busy and it was a small city, it was St. Petersburg. And then after that, I'll get into the six months that I've been living in a van and how it's been going, if I have any regrets, and just give you a little bit of 
insight to how my days go and how everything's been going. All right. All right. So let's go. Let's go. That was a kava bar. Um, there's a quiet kava bar in the North Georgia mountains. So yeah, so let's, you know, get into the six months of living in a van. So the reason I, I kind of brought you in here, besides the fact that I wanted the tea for the, for the live going on tonight, it was also kind of perfect that I was doing this video today because, like I said, this was one of the first places I ended up. Uh, so when I came into the North Georgia mountains from Florida, I stopped at two towns for two, two different interviews. And after this, I had one interview one day, the, the day after I got here. And then I had another interview the day after that in a different town up the mountain. And I got that second job right away, but I wouldn't be starting till the next week. So I was like, okay, what's a girl to do? Um, and because, you know, I had just left and 
again, no regrets. I wasn't missing anybody, but I think I was, I might've been craving the tea. And I think that's why I looked up on Google kava bars in the area. I really didn't think there was going to be anything. I thought it was going to show me like, you know, Asheville, North Carolina is the closest one or something. But this little kava bar popped up. So I was like, oh, I'm just a few towns away and off I went. So I ended up making friends with the owner or not the owner, actually one of the Actually, he owns one of the other businesses here, but he works on the weekends at this kava bar and told me that I could go ahead and stay here if I wanted to, like I could just park overnight. So I did that for a couple of days and he said not to worry about it because nobody really cares, but that wasn't true. Somebody cared because um, I think on the second night, or maybe, I think on the second night, I got the knock. And I will put that, I'll link that video down below. And if you're new to the channel, if you're wondering how I ended up living in a van, or why I live in a van, or any of that, I'm going to link that video also below, so you can check out that story so I ended up getting the knock and again you could see that video down below but then by that you know by that time in a few days I would have been starting at the new job and it wasn't a big deal from here I ended up I would stay between two Walmarts between two towns so I would stay on the days that I had to work um, at the Walmart near that job. And then I would stay at the other Walmart in a different town on my days off and I would go exploring there, like in that area. So that's how that went in the beginning. So as, you know, the first few weeks, I actually got here and I was really sick. I had, I was starting to get adrenal fatigue again. I was just really stressed out from trying to leave Florida. Um, so when I got here, I went to work and the, the job that I'm doing or was doing, still am doing, is very physical in a way of there's just, a, there's a lot of walking. So between being sick and walking an amount of hours I was not used to. I think the combination of the two, and honestly, I found Celsius at that point because I needed something to replace my tea. Um, so I started drinking Celsius, which is a metabolism booster. Uh, so I think that had something to do with it too. And so I lost a lot of weight as the weeks went by. But as far as how the emotional side of it all, I was happy leaving. And I, I, once I got in the van and I started driving that freedom, like I felt like an eagle flying. I was leaving, I was leaving Florida. It was all in my rear view mirror. Well, I can't really see rear view side view mirror because I can't really see out the back here but it just felt amazing like I can't even tell you how amazing it felt and then when I hit that welcome to Georgia oh my god <laughs> mind you that same day I lost my keys at the at the rust area I did find them after about 45 minutes <laughs> uh I'll link that video below you could see that too um but I wasn't mad um, and again, once I got here, I had made friends with the Kava Bar people a little bit, so that kind of felt a little homey. Then I started working and I established a routine between the two Walmarts, a morning routine with the dog, 
I established a routine on my work days and I found a park just right outside, not at the edge of town, I guess. And it was a park boat ramp. And it was nice and quiet enough that because I have a reactive pup, people really don't bring their dogs there because it was a boat, boat launch. Like they'd bring every now and then. I'm not gonna say that no dogs go there, but it wasn't the type of park that people would, you know, want to bring their dogs to. So it was that park, which I still go to today. I established a routine as soon as I got up from Walmart, I got up in the morning, I got out of there quickly, early. I would make my morning coffee. I would go out, we'd walk around the park along the river. We'd play ball. This is what we still do every day. We play ball, we walk around by the river, especially the work days. If it's off work days, dependent on what I'm doing, I may still, if I'm in the area, I may start the day there, but Sometimes, you know, I, I go somewhere else if I'm not working, but we, I still take him out. I still walk him. We still play ball. Um, so that's how my routine started and it's still pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing that's really different now is I don't, I don't sleep at the Walmarts somewhere like so I got here at the beginning of October, somewhere I think in the beginning of November, my brake started giving me a problem. I wasn't used to the, the mountains. I didn't wear out my pads because they didn't need to re be replaced. I find out later that they're fine, but there was some wear in there. I don't, I don't know the whole, but it established a squeak because I was using the brakes too much. The way I found find this out is I, I looked for a local business that worked on brakes. And so I found it was an oil changing brake tire place in town. And the owner there took a look at my brakes, my brake pads, and he said they were fine. Um, and then he explained to me the possibilities of why I have the squeak. From there, I kept coming back because I was still, I was kind of like still hearing the squeak and I was still, I don't know, I was nervous about the brakes and all that. And so he would just keep checking them. And at some point something needed replacing in there, but point being, I kept going back to this said establishment because of my brakes. And I ended up making friends with the owner and because I went back so many times for my breaks, I ended up just like going back to like say hi, me and Bogey. We would go back to the, the shop. I would get my human, human chatting time and Bogey would get his human petting time. So I made a friend there. That was my first friend. And from there, I, on the holidays, had asked if it would be okay because Walmart was gonna be closed on Thanksgiving day. And then again on Christmas day for Thanksgiving day, I had asked if I could stay at the shop just for that, you know, the night before, because I didn't want to wake up at an empty Walmart. It was going to be too weird. Cause typically there would be a night crew there and I actually felt, you know, safe with the, you know, everything going on around me. I ended up staying there that Thanksgiving Eve. And then again, I asked again for Christmas, Christmas Eve. Yeah, Christmas Eve. And then from there, sometime in January, the owner of the business, my friend said, hey, just, I'm just park here at night and sleep at night. And that was like the best thing ever because it was, it's in a quiet area and the shop has cameras, I'd be safe. And that, that's why I don't sleep at the Walmarts anymore. <laughs> um, so that routine started where I would have somewhere to go to park and sleep, which I still do. 
you know, going back to the routines, like I found my regular, so I had places to sleep. And then later on, I had a more permanent place to sleep or park and sleep. I had a place where I would dump my tanks. There's a campground that belongs to the National Forest. And I just pay $10. And every two weeks, I dump my black tank and my gray tank. I fill up on fresh water. I can, I can go, you know, drop my garbage there as well. I have also used their showers for an additional like $5. You can take a shower and they have heated building where the showers are. So I didn't utilize that too much, but I have used it a few times. And then that same campground is by a boat launch, which is prettier than the one that I go to every day. And so my routine with that is if I'm dumping my tanks and filling up on water that day, I'm spending the rest of the day at the, the day recreation area of the National Forest of this particular campground. And sometimes I go on other days as well, but definitely on those days that I dump my tanks, I, that's what I do. I have a regular laundry place that I go to. It's probably the only one around here, but I started thrifting. So now I have my favorite thrift stores. I have like different other parks that I go to if it's like my day off and just they're a little farther away that I like to go and hang out for the day and bring bogey. Like I've established a routine. I have established, like I have, I have friends at work, have, you know, the shop owner that we chat, who's my, you know, we're friends now. Um, I have my YouTube family as well. Uh, I haven't really been alone or, lonely or anything like that. I don't know if it's because I'm, I was an only child. I don't know if it's because being introverted and empath, like I don't really want to be among a lot of people all the time. I don't feel the need that I have to have, you know, established friendships. I'm just, I'm fine, me and the dog and making human contact. <laughs> when I can. I do, you know, miss going to the Kava bar, like that community, that routine. I don't, like, in the beginning, I missed it. But I also realized it was something that hindered my progress of stepping out of the box. It was this place of safety. And so because I had this place of safety, I never tried to leave as much as I didn't want to be living in Florida this little community was like my little safe bubble and so I didn't try harder to leave and I don't know that I now how everything has progressed and how it happened and how I got the van and how I left and how I ended up here like I don't know that I would change any of that I don't I mean, I went through the things I went through. They weren't great, but I don't think I would change anything, honestly. As far as my apartment goes that I had, actually, technically, I'm still on the lease. So that's my address. I'm on the lease for two reasons. One, it helps me out. I have an address. And two, it helps out my friend who kept the apartment with her son. So I'm still on that lease. I technically, you know, I have an address. Uh, for those mean people who want to say I'm homeless. And no, I, I'm still on a, I'm still on a lease, but this is my home. I, I do miss that apartment. But again, that, that apartment was like the Kava bar. It was my little protective bubble. If you haven't seen that apartment, I mean, it's not like a luxury type apartment, but it was a gorgeous old style Florida type apartment. It was huge and it was comforting and it had this huge patio. And I'll link those videos below because I have video of that apartment. Um, I think I have a walkthrough. I, I do have a, a video, um, an apartment tour 
I do miss that apartment. But like I said, at the same time, it also held me back from trying to leave a, an area that I just wasn't happy in. I was happy in the apartment. I was happy at the Kava bar, but Florida itself, I was not happy with. And it, I was just really depressed and sad and just felt stuck. The good news is with that apartment, if I ever want to visit it, you know, my friend's there. I can go visit the apartment, me and Bogey. We loved it there. Speaking of Bogey, if you're new to the channel, Bogey has dog aggression. There's some like smart aleck remarks here and there about how I need to train him better. He's eight years old. He used to be dog friendly until we got attacked on different occasions by other dogs. And so he became reactive, kind of like a PTSD to dogs. He used to play all the time when he was a puppy. He was well socialized with other dogs. But after we got attacked those several times, and I say we because I was involved with that, I've had to like pull, you know, off leash dogs off my dog. I've had to step in between a dog, same dog all the time on the elevator where the owner just led with the dog instead of seeing who's in the elevator when the door is opened. And then this dog would attack my dog. And then there was these other, it, there was two other occasions that attacks in the building that I lived in with like over 500 apartments. It just got really bad. And it was hard to, at some point I was walking down 11 flights of stairs to avoid dogs. So in that respect, being here I can find big open spaces where we can go and walk and we've done trails and I'm always, you know, on the lookout for other people and with dogs and we make it work. His dog aggression is a lot better now than it was when he was little, but it's still there. And again, it's like a PTSD. So if those are going to comment that I can train my dog better so he'd, you know, behave better. How do we do that for the humans? How do, how do we train them so they don't have PTSD anymore? I don't think that's ever going to go away, honestly, because that's not how it works. <laughs> okay. Um, so I do my best to make sure he's happy, healthy, safe. Other pets are safe. And he gets to enjoy the outdoors. And he's been, since we've been here, he's been outside so much more than he ever was in Florida. Like we went, we weren't able to take walks or go to parks or without coming across other dogs. So I always had to like take him out and bring him back in or he'd be losing his mind. And I might as well just address this too. He wears a pronged collar because it's for my safety. If he's reactive towards another dog and he goes to lunge, he is strong enough to take me down. He's done it before. The pronged collar does not hurt him. He's been wearing it since he's a year or two old. It was the only thing that protected me from being pulled down. Every time we go for a walk, when I go to put his pronged collar on, he puts his neck out. He's not traumatized by the collar. It doesn't hurt him. And that's for the other comments I'm getting about his pronged collar. So lady with the comments of the pronged collar, it's for my safety. I'm not going to break something or hurt myself because I thought a pronged collar was inhumane. It doesn't hurt him and it keeps me safe. <laughs> so Bogey gets to go out a lot more and enjoy the outdoors. And I look forward to more of this when we start traveling. I have to say it's been easy since I got in the van. Like it's been, everything has flowed. 
I, I left Florida. I got a job right away. I found, I established a routine. I had places to sleep and then I had an even better place to sleep. I've made friends at work. I have my places that I go to. I have my places that I take care of my chores. Like I love it here and I love the routine and back at sticks and bricks, I, you know, I was in the house all the time or at the kava bar. I didn't get, and Bogey was inside all the time. I'd occasionally bring him to the kava bar when it was quiet and I knew that there wouldn't be a lot of other dogs there so he could socialize with the humans because Bogey loves humans, like loves. He's the extrovert, I'm the introvert. <laughs> so I try to get him as much human time as possible. But I have no regrets getting in the van. It's been six months. I don't really have any wanting to go back to sticks and bricks at the moment. I'm sure one day the time will come and maybe I'll want some cute little tiny home or something. This van is very, it's functional. I have a kitchen, I have a bathroom. I have a place to sleep. I have air conditioning. I have a, a furnace. I have all the comforts that I need on wheels. I'm never looking for a bathroom. <laughs> My bathroom's here. So all in all, it's been great. I have no regrets. And that's that's been my six months. I try not to be all over the place with this video and I had a little bit of notes here to keep me like focused on the conversation, but I don't know if you're thinking of van life, just do it. Don't wait. Life's too short. Just, I just, I needed to get in the van and go and figure it out from there. Not everything can be planned out to the T, not, you know, I, I didn't have my finances, all my financial ducks in a row. I just decided I just needed to get in the van and get out of what was making me happy and figure it out from there. And I have no regrets doing that. None at all. So there you have it. I have two quotes for you and I need to get my iPad so I can... I look at them a lot, these quotes, and, well, hold on. Walk through life having faith. The definition of faith is trusting in the unseen. You have to trust something and really visualize it in order to make it a reality in your own life. This was in a business uh, video and I just, I love that quote. But the quote that just is really the definition of just do it. You won't have any regrets, you won't be sorry. If you, can, if you feel something is for you, just do it. Do the thing that scares you because ultimately it could be the thing that saves you. I'll say it again. So you don't have to rewind. Do the thing that scares you because ultimately it could be the thing that saves you. And I feel like van life has so saved my life. Like I was at a point where like my soul was dead. My soul was dead. I was dying on the inside and I just really didn't, I just wasn't connected with the world. And I was just so sad all the time. Like what, what was my point? What is my purpose? And I have no regrets. So just do the thing, do the thing you wanna do. Maybe it's not van life, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's a job, maybe it's a, a change of, of where you live, the state you live in, I don't know. Just if you feel something and you need to make a change, make the change, do it. So that's it. No regrets. I love my little house on wheels. It's the best.
It's the best thing I've ever done. It's the best thing for me and Bogey. Our life is totally different. Has totally changed. <laughs> He's just laying back there. I, it's time to take him to the park. I want to take him to the park before we start the live this evening. And this is pre-recorded. There's no live tonight. Whenever this gets posted, it's just that today is Saturday, March 23rd, and I'm doing a live. So I want to get him some exercise. I want to work on my chatty little tea. I thank you guys for, for watching. I thank you guys for being here. I hope this video wasn't too all over the place. I just wanted to do like a an evaluation of my first six months. So there you have it. I know there's a lot of new people to the channel as well, and I wanna say welcome, and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being in the comments and liking the videos. Me and Bogey really appreciate everyone. If you've been here from the beginning to if you just subscribed, thank you. Also, if you haven't subscribed and you watch our videos, our videos, me and Bogey, <laughs> just hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. It would help us so much. It'll help us get on the road a little bit faster. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you on the next one.